city squares, buses, churches, plowed fields of black soil, tractors, trucks, and grain in the elevators, rolling hills, hometowns, friends and neighbors, backyards and streets, and the highway over to Junction City. This is America, young, lusty, where necessity has been indeed the mother of invention. westward push. For 250 years we spread thin across a continent. Another 50 years and the job was done. The new rawness gave way to dignity and a way of life. People were established. It was time to turn to new things. With great daring and a certain amount of apprehension, a man could buy one of those newfangled buggies, a horseless carriage. This was the year, 1903, that the brothers named Wright, Orville and Wilbur, at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, put wings on the engine and flew. These were the days people said, auto cars? Not practical. Why, we don't have auto car roads. By the 1920s, cars were old hat. But to most people, the Wright brothers' invention was still new. It was at this time they saw their first airplane. The day of the barnstormer had come. You saw them at county fairs. They landed in pastures, took a few of the daring for a ride, and moved on. It wasn't all joy rides. Airplane people were serious. They flew the mail from coast to coast. By 1927, there were 240 airports in the land. City fathers debated the question of where to put the airport. Today, there are 7,000 airports. Every major city has at least one. Almost half of America's airports are publicly owned. They are a public facility like parks and streets, libraries and auditoriums. They are the basis of new industries and the extension of others. They are in growing demand and strive mightily to meet that demand. A third of America lives in small towns and on farms or ranches. These towns have less than 2,500 people and are centers for the surrounding country. Since the first barnstormer landed in the levelest adjacent pasture he could find, the small towns have discussed and planned airports. The biggest question then and now is where should the airport be? How far from town? Or how close to town? Will air visitors walk? Or will there be commercial ground transportation or courtesy cars? The land immediately available was often accepted as solving the question. Today, the town fathers, the civic planners, are more thoughtful. There are examples to study. There is experience to draw from. But most important is the nearly phenomenal growth of airplane usage to be considered. Airplanes aren't an occasional sight anymore. They are common. They are almost old hat. An airport is a terminal, a depot. It should be easily available, as close to town as possible. Airport specifications vary according to altitude and temperature. Local specifications are available from state aeronautics departments. How big is the job of building a community airport? The biggest investment is the land, 15 to 40 acres, level and clear, with good airplane approaches at both ends. Airport expansion must be considered. Longer runways, future parking space, and more hangars. Wise men look back over the past two decades and plan for the 20 years to come. Farmers and ranchers are ardent and faithful airplane users. The big ground distances in rural America are reduced a third or a quarter by flying. This flying is having a strong effect on the economy of raising a crop and bringing it to harvest. Growers have streamlined agriculture. 
and since the introduction of farm machinery, they have put it on a mass production basis. Since World War II, the airplane to the farmer has been a useful piece of farm machinery. The local airport has become community headquarters for seeding and fertilizing, the application of harvest sprays, the control of weeds, the control of insects and all the principal crops. An airport is no luxury item. It is the hub of thousands of acres of farmland and to the surrounding community, the rural airport reduces the cost of aerial dusting and spray. The airplanes can be based close to the job and by this, the savings can be as much as a dollar an acre for each acre fertilized, seeded, dusted or sprayed. One season's work of crop dusting has often paid for an airport. Many farmers and ranchers are airplane owners. They have an airstrip at the home place, but if the combine is down, they are not averse to landing in the stubble to see that the machine is soon going again. to use the airplane like a pickup truck, to go into town for plowshares, axles, or seed. Tomorrow, they'll go over to Eden to attend the farm auction, and they'll make a dozen trips into town before the plowing is done. The government services use community airports in the management of the public domain. At one time, the protection of our 150 national forests depended upon ground crews that often had to hike, trail into the fire. Today, the Forest Service contracts for fixed base airplanes to spot and survey fires. Older planes are usually used for this work since they have short landing field characteristics and are especially suited to the job. Smoke jumper firefighting crews parachute to a position near the fire and put it out before it has a chance to spread. This system of reaching fires while they are small has been in use for well over a decade to save billions of board feet of timber. Smoke jumping has also contributed to the protection of the nation's water supply. The small airport, both municipal and private, plays an important role in the protection of natural resources. Aerial conservation work is done by the U.S. Bureau of Entomology and Plant Quarantine. In the east and in the west, large forest land areas have been sprayed to kill destructive insects. The gypsy moth, the tussock moth, the spruce budworm, the pine butterfly. Since more timber is lost to insects than to fire, this work by airplanes is significant. It has an indirect effect on all Americans. It reaches out to us through our lumber industry, through our nation's wood supply, into paper and furniture and housing and all the products of wood. American industry and business in the West, in the South, in the East, is the number one user of airplanes and airports. Most municipal airports of the manufacturing centers of New England, the Great Lakes region, and the South are constructed to handle a constant flow of air traffic. Runways are paved, they are long, and there are several of them. They are built for heavy multi-engine aircraft. They are built to handle the executive aircraft of American industry, as industry builds branch factories, as it follows the pattern of decentralization, the smaller cities face an airport problem. There are few large industries today that are not airplane users. Many use both large and small aircraft. The smaller business planes are used by the engineering division, by production, and by the spearheading sales division. As one sales manager said, 
We use our airplane because it makes us independent. We make our own schedules. We don't have delays en route. We gain from two to three days a week. We figure the cost of a trip by regular public transportation and apply it to our airplane fund. The salesmen with big territories to cover are turning to the airplane. They visit the town with an airport like they used to visit the town on the railroad and then the town on the highway. More and more, they will come to the town with an airport. Where is the industry that isn't dependent upon sales? Where is the industry that doesn't want to maintain the position it's reached? Where is its payroll? The flow of America's products from manufacturer to consumer is vital. The consumer is the market. The market found and developed by a salesman. Airports serve in local emergencies. They are part of the plan in case of national emergency. Airports are terminals for freight. Airports are a necessity to a multi-million dollar dusting and spraying business. They are used by farmers. By ranchers. They are used by families by sportsmen and vacationers. They are used by the fish and wildlife services, by pipe and power line patrolmen, by local airlines in outlying districts. The first two hours after sunup is when most of the planes go out. They may be going on business for a construction corporation, for an oil company, for a diesel engine distributor, it may be a local real estate man, or an orthopedic surgeon, or a mining engineer. They may land at Winnipeg, Atlanta, Mexico City. They may land at Oak Ridge, Fairbanks, Flagstaff, or Anaconda. They may land at your town, or mine. For the air is the greatest freeway man will ever know. It doesn't have to be built or maintained. It touches every city and town. So little is needed to use it. An airplane, a smooth strip of ground. 